How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? As you get ready to listen to this upcoming episode from the Playmakers Vlog Podcast, I just want to let you know that you too can get into the podcast journey. It's very simple. It's very easy. All you got to do is jump on Anchor, the one-star shop for a recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. It is 100% free and easy to use. And even with Anchor, you can get great sponsors who want to advertise your podcast. That means you can get paid for your podcast right away from Jump Street. So, in fact, reading this ad is what I'm doing right now. So, if you had the time, if you had the wood and determination and the dream to be a podcaster, what you waiting for? Jump on it. Anchor is the way to go. You ready? I'm ready. The Playmakers Bar Podcast present Hoops Talk, hosted by Darnell, the playmaker, Salins. NBA, college basketball. Playoffs, Mars Madness. No matter what, we talking hoops, man. Let's get it. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is your boy, Darnell, the playmaker, Salins. I hear from Jacksonville, Florida. Bringing you Friday's edition of Hoops Talk. Now, you know, we got some stuff to get into, especially in the college basketball world. But, 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 we're going to start it up at the NBA. LeBron James and Kevin Durant have picked their teams for this Sunday's All Star game. Remember, everything is on television. There will be no fans allowed. And everything will be happening on Sunday, March 7th. Three-point contest skills challenge before the game. The game will kick off at 8 p.m. on TNT. Everything's on TNT, by the way. The game will kick off on 8 p.m. At the halftime of the game, it will be the slam dunk contest taking over the halftime show. And then, you know, once we get to that fourth quarter, whatever team is leading, they will add 24 points to it and make it the target score. So whoever gets to that target score within the fourth quarter wins the All-Star game. I'm going to come back to the All-Star game to let y'all know Who's on Team LeBron and who's on Team Kevin Durant? But first and foremost, let's go. Let's get a recap of what happened Tuesday, yesterday. I mean, Tuesday, Wednesday, and yesterday. Tuesday, March the second, we saw the San Antonio Spurs defeat the New York Knicks one nineteen to ninety three. Six Spurs in double figures for the game, led by Lies with eighteen points, five rebounds. De- Devontae Murray had seventeen, six, and five. Quickly led the Knicks with 26 points. And Julius Randle, the lone all-star for the New York Knicks, 14 points, 11 rebounds. He had a double-double. The San Antonio Spurs are above 500 in the Western Conference, surprisingly, of what they've been through, especially with COVID. But they are above 500. Moving on down, it was the L.A. Clippers. Without Kawhi Leonard in Boston, Against Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and the Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics took it 117-112. to Paul George led the way with 32 points and 5 rebounds for the Clippers. Reggie Jackson tried to help with 25 and 7 assists. But it was all about Kimbo Walker, ladies and gentlemen. Kimbo Walker is turning into Kimbo Walker again. 25 points, 6 assists, 6 Celtics in double figures. We had the Denver Nuggets. They took the trip to Milwaukee to take on the Bucks. And what can I say? The Nuggets gave it to the Bucks. The Bucks had to take one on the chin at home. Denver Nuggets 128 to Milwaukee Bucks 97. The Joker, All Star Joker, 37 points, 10 rebounds, 7, 11 assists. Another triple double for the Joker. But don't worry, Jamal Murray did his part with 24 points and 6 assists. That was 6 nuggets and double figures back on Tuesday night in, in Milwaukee. Giannis doing Giannis things. 27 points, 8 rebounds. Chris Middleton tried to help with 20 points and 6 assists. But it was Denver's night on Tuesday. But don't worry, there's more action to get into. The Phoenix Suns, the Phoenix Suns, the Phoenix Suns were in L.A. to take on the defending champ, the Los Angeles Lakers. 
I actually watched this game. Some reason after halftime, this game got physical. A lot of texts was called. We had like four texts called in the span of three minutes. One was on LeBron. One was on the head coach, Frank Vogel. And two, and I mean two, was on Devin Booker, who got ejected. Bad ejection because the ref, they seemed to get, they felt like the game was getting out of hand. So they just tossed the biggest, one of the biggest stars on the court out the game in Devin Booker. It didn't matter. You know why it didn't matter Tuesday night? Because the Phoenix Suns came here on a mission in Staples Center. And they left out victorious on that mission. 114-104 victory over the Los Angeles Lakers. Eric Sarge came off the bench. Dropped 21 points and 5 rebounds for the Phoenix Suns. LeBron James for the Lakers. 38 points. 5 rebounds, 6 assists. But it wasn't about the star of Devin Booker. It wasn't about Chris Paul or DeAndre. It was about Derek Sharge coming off the bench, doing his thing against the Lakers. And Devin Booker got ejected. Take that to the bank. That's how you ended off Tuesday night. And then we get to Wednesday night, ladies and gentlemen, Wednesday night. The two best teams in the NBA took took the stage in Philadelphia. Still disappointing that this game was not televised and we had to deal with look, look, James Harden going back to Houston to take on the records. We knew what was going to happen and that was exactly what happened, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. The Utah Jazz took the trip to Philadelphia to take on the 70 Sixers. A good game it was. Philadelphia took it 131-123. to Donovan Mitchell, 33 points. Eight rebounds, six assists. Six Jazz were in terrible figures, but, but, but Joel Embiid, the man who's in the who's in the driver's seat for the MVP right now, probably the MVP of the first half of the season. Cause guess what? That's where we are at right now. Forty points and nineteen rebounds. Joel Embiid was a man among boys. And Rudy Gobert couldn't even stop him. That's how good he is. Not even Rudy Gobert could stop Joel Embiid. 40 points and 19 rebounds. It's ridiculous. And not to mention Tobias Harris said, Hey, I want some of the action too. 22 points and 10 rebounds. Six, 76 were in Daryl figures as well. But it was still to enjoy Embiid's show. And then we get to the ESPN doubleheader where uh, the Brooklyn Nets took the trip to Houston as James Harden returned to the Houston Rockets. And he gave them what everybody knew was going to happen. A triple-double with 29 points, 10 rebounds, 14 assists. Kyrie Irving had 24 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists. The Brooklyn Nets beat the the Houston Rockets 132-114. to 114. Then we had the Chicago Bulls head down to the Big Easy to take on Zion Williams and the Los Pelicans. The All-Stars came to play in this one. But it was the Chicago Bulls led by Zach Levine with a 128 to 124 victory over the Pelicans. Zach Levine, 36 points, 8 assists. Hey, Kobe White came to play too with 25 points. Good job, Kobe White. Tar Heels! You'll get to, you'll you'll understand why when I get college basketball. There's a big game for North Carolina coming up. For those of you who know, you know. Zion Williamson, 28 points, nine rebounds, five assists. JJ Ritter had 22 points. Brandon Eagle, 21 points, but it wasn't enough. It was a Zach Levine show. It was Zach Levine show. Let's see what he doing in the All Star game. Always Zion Williamson doing in the All Star game. Still gonna get to the Rockets in a minute. Then the nightcap. Portland, Portland, Oregon. Steph Curry and the crew came into town to take on Dame Dollar in the Portland Trailblazers. As you will know, Steph Curry does what he does when he plays the Trailblazers. 35 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists. Dame Dollar didn't have to be the starter today, but guess what? On that day, he had 22 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists. Melo! 
Carmelo Anthony also had 22 points. So Dame Dollar didn't have to do it by himself. As the Portland Trail Blazers won 108 to 106, and Dame Little did hit the game winning bucket. And then last night, ladies and gentlemen, Thursday, March 4th, Toronto Raptors at the Boston Celtics. Boston could have used this victory, and they got it 132 125. Jason Tatum, 27 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists. Jalen Brown, 21 points, 7 rebounds, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight Boston Celtics scored in double figures in this game. If they would have lost this game, it would have been so much talk about the Boston Celtics and their struggles. But they won the game, so let it be. The Los Angeles Clippers took the trip to Washington to take on the Wizards. Last time they played, they had they didn't have Kawhi Leonard. In this game last night, they did not have Paul George. And the Washington Wizards defeated the Clippers one. 19 to 117. Kawhi Leonard, 22 points, five rebounds, seven Clippers in double figures. Mm, 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 mm. But guess what? Bradley Bill said no. 33 points. 33 points and seven rebounds. Wesley Westbrook, damn near a triple double. 27 points, nine rebounds, 11 assists, six Wizards in double figures. As the Wizards got a good one over the Clippers. Denver took the trip from Milwaukee to Indiana to take on the Pacers. They give the Pacers a beating. A 10-point victory for the Nuggets in 113-103. Michael Porter Jr. stole the show with 24 points, 11 rebounds. Jamal Murray, 23 points. The Joker, damn near a triple-double with 20 points. That's 12 rebounds, 8 assists. Miles trying to try to lead, try to help the Pacers with 22 points and 12 rebounds. Doug McDermott, 20 points off the bench, but it wasn't enough. You had the Milwaukee Bucks in Memphis to take on this young Mrs. team led by John Morant. A good bounce back win for them for the Giannis and the Bucks as they took this one 112 to 111. Giannis into a Cooper, 26 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists. Middleton with 22 points and 10 rebounds. John Morant did everything he could, but he wasn't enough with 35 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. Dylan Brooks had it, 23 points and 7 assists himself. It just wasn't enough. There was no go. There was no stuff carrying Draymond Green for going to stay as they went into Phoenix and Phoenix beat him down. I believe his final score was one twenty to ninety eight. This night we're gonna get into that one. And then the night cap, we had the Miami Heat in New Orleans to take on the New Orleans Pelicans. Jimmy Butler versus Zion Williamson. Oh nope, take that back. Zion Williamson did not play this game. Bam Adebayo did not play this game. So Brandon Ingram versus Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Buckets does what he always does. 103 to 93 to Miami Heat took it. Butler, 29 points and 9 assists. Kelly Olin, who started off the game hot. Fans with 18 points, 10 rebounds, and 7 assists. You had six Pelicans and double figures led by Brandon Ingram with 17, 5, and 9. Those were your recap from Tuesday, Wednesday, and last night's game. But now let's talk about this All Star team here, because as I said earlier, three point contest skills challenge before the All Star game, slammed up contest at halftime of the game, and we're gonna finish off like we did last year. Target scoring the fourth quarter, whoever gets there first wins the game. The first half of the NBA season is done, so here's the here's the All Star team. LeBron James, LeBron James team will feature, of course, LeBron James himself. And his first pick of the starters had to be Giannis Antetokounmpo. We have LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo on the same team. That is scary. Then he followed that up with Steph Curry, Luka Doncic. How long your front court by us? Your two front court men is LeBron James and Giannis. And now you added Steph Curry and Luka Doncic in the back court. And to finish it off with the big man, he picked the Joker. So LeBron James starting five is himself. Giannis into the Cooper, the Joker, Steph Curry, and Luka Doncic. That's the hell of a starting five. That is a hell of a starting five right there. But Kevin Durant would not be outdone when it comes to starting. Even though Kevin Durant is not playing, his starting five is damn good too. Kyrie Irving, Bradley Bill, Jason Tatum, Kawhi Leonard, and Joel Embiid. 
The Joker versus Joel and B is going to be a good one. But come on, it's all star game. So this is, it is what it is. The reserves for the team LeBron, Damian Lillard, Ben Simmons, Chris Paul, Jalen Brown, Paul George, the minus a bonus, and Ruti Gobert. And then the reserves for Kevin Durant's team is James Harden, Devin Booker, Zion Williamson, Zach Levine, Julius Randle, Mikhail Vucevic. Shout out to Vucevic. Another a second all-star appearance for the Orlando Magic. And Donovan Mitchell. You know what the funny thing is? Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell are the last two picks of the all-star game. The team with the best worker was picked as the final two. Donovan Mitchell went to Kevin Durant and Rudy Gobert went to LeBron. The exact order that I listed the names, ladies and gentlemen, is the exact order where they was picked by each guy. Rudy Gobert is last on LeBron's list. Donovan Mitchell is last on Kevin Durant's list. The disrespect is real. Even LeBron said it on TNT. And he tried to make it sound like there was no disrespect. But when you play the games, the NBA games, the lives, the 2Ks and whatnot, you did play with the Utah Jazz. Now you wouldn't Utah had Carl Malone and John Stockton and Jeff Hornacek and the crew. Am I wrong to say? Has anybody let me know through social media when you was playing your, your two NBA 2K games, your NBA Live games, did you play with the Utah Jazz? Did you? I'll admit I did one time. I felt good too. You know, I created my own, created my own little player. Went to the Utah Jazz. I walked them black jerseys, cried a bit. Looked the good, deep, silence 20 in black and with Utah on it. But they're very good. I liked it. I enjoyed, I enjoyed playing with that team. I did. But if you play with the Utah Jazz when you play NBA 2K or NBA Live, get at your boy. Get at your boy. But that's your all-star team once again. Giannis, Steph Curry, Luka. Joker, LeBron, Damian Lillard, Ben Simmons, Chris Paul, Jalen Brown, Paul George, Demonis Sabonis, and Rudy Gobert. That's Team LeBron. Team Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Joel Embiid, Kawhi Leonard, Bradley Bill, Jason Tatum, James Harden, Devin Booker, Zion Williamson, Zach Levine, Julius Randle, Nikhil Vucevic, and Donovan Mitchell. Y'all enjoy All-Star Weekend or All-Star Sunday, should I say. And then the guys will get back at it on on the on, on the 10th. When is the 10th? It, the 10th is on a Wednesday, I believe. So I think I can come back on Tuesday show and preview the second half of the season. So, yeah. But now let's switch gears to the college basketball round because this is where we're going to get down to business. The recap of Tuesday, Wednesdays, and, you know, last night's game. We have some things to look at here. Tuesday night, it was the Baylor Bears, the number three team in the country, coming out their first loss of the season to the Kansas Jayhawks. Now they are in Morgantown to take on the since ranked Mountaineers of West Virginia. Good game it was. 94 to 86 overtime victory for the Baylor Bears. Gerard Butler for Baylor, 25 points. A good bounce back win. The shocker of the day, ladies and gentlemen, from Tuesday night. Number four, Illinois was in Michigan to take on the second ring, Michigan Wolverine. And we had a beat down of Sir, and it wasn't by Michigan. Illinois walked in there and left Ann Arbor in 76 to 55 victories on the Michigan Wolverines. Trent Fraser, 22 points to lead the final line out. Oh, my goodness. They beat the number two team by 23 points. Ugh. None but Michigan's second half of the season. It was the Iron Bowl on Tuesday night as the Auburn took, took the Tuscaloosa to take on the F point Crimson Tide and the F point Crimson Tide did what they needed to do. 70 to 58 victory over Auburn. Jay 
Sucker forward, 23 points. And gra- congratulations to Natos and the Alabama Crimson Tide as they have clinched the SEC regular season title. The number one seed in the SEC tournament next week. Congratulations to Nate Oates and the Christmas Tide. Fresno State took down Boise. Not a good, not a good one for Boise State. 67-64. Boise has some work to do now. They have some work to do now. Not only they got work to do, Xavier has work to do now because they got dropped by Georgetown 72 to 66. Definitely not a good one. For the Muscantins of Xavier. It was Indiana and, and East Lansing to take on Michigan State. Michigan State took it 64 to 58. Good win for Tom Mizzo and the Michigan State Spartans as they continue to build their resume and get into the tournament. Aaron Henry, 22 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists to lead the Spartans. It was the Duke Blue that was in, in the ATL to take on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Duke needed this win. They needed a win. They didn't get it. They did not get it. Georgia Tech, 81 77 in overtime. I'm going to say it again. I said it last episode. I'm going to say it again. Moses White is in the conversation for the Warden Player of the Year. He might actually win it. Moses White, 29 points, 14 rebounds, 5 assists. I think Moses White is the front runner. In my book, Moses White is the front runner for the Warden Smith Player of the Year. I got Moses White, I got Caden Cuttingham, and I got Luka Garza third right now. If I'm missing anybody, let me know because I'm not trying to miss anybody. But from what I've been watching and what I've been seeing, Moses White is a real is the real deal. No, this dude is the real deal. You already know about Caden Cuttingham, presented to be the number one player picked in the NBA draft, and we know about Luka Garza. But some, but Moses White is balling. TCU went to Lobit, Texas to take on their rival, their in-state rival, Texas Tech Red Raiders, the 18th ranked team in the country, and the 18th ranked team in the country. They bounced back from their loss over the weekend to beat the Horn Frogs by 20, 69-49. Kyler Edwards, 20 points for four assists. A game that both teams are using the Big Ten. 25th ranked Wisconsin Badgers, they took the trip to take on 23rd ranked Purdue Boilermakers. And the, and the sliding for Wisconsin continues as the Boilermakers took it 60. No, took it 73 to 69. Zach Eady, 21 points, seven rebounds to lead the board to lead the Boilermakers, but it's more about the Wisconsin Badgers. They are falling. They are free falling right now. Surprised they will still ranked it. They still ranked. But they are free falling, man. Free falling. This like the time they have a free fall. And then the nightcap, Ole Miss needed a needed a win, needed to handle business against Kentucky, and they did just that, seventy to sixty two over the Wildcats of Kentucky. Good job for Ole Miss to keep yourself alive. Still can't put the death nail in the Kentucky Wildcats just yet because we still got that during this SEC tournament and anything can happen around that time. But for me right now, I really want to put the death nail in them, but I'm gonna save it for right now. Wednesday's action, UCLA. Was in Oregon to take on the Ducks, and the Ducks continue their winning ways, eighty-two to seventy-four, as they have taken control of the Pac-12. Chris Durant, twenty-three points to lead the Ducks. It was Missouri and Gainesville to take on my Florida Gators, and my Florida Gators disappointing loss right here, seventy-two to seventy to the Missouri Tigers. A very disappointing loss, set I say for the Florida Gators. We needed that win. We needed to, we needed to stack up wins, but Missouri needed it too because they was on the losing streak. They went from ranked to unranked in main no time. So Missouri needed a win just as much as we did. So somebody had to take a hell. And unfortunately, it was the Florida Gators. Drew Smith for the Missouri Tigers, seventeen points, nine assists to help get them out of games with Florida. The Clemson Tigers, they took the trip to New York to take on the Syracuse Orange Man and Jim Behan's crew did handle business 64 to 54 victory over the Clemson Tigers. Allen Griffin, 22 points and 10 rebounds to lead the way. 
UConn, UConn was in Seton Hall to take on the Pirates. UConn walked out of there. 69-58. Isaiah Wiley. 17 points, 10 rebounds to lead the way. Number 14, Creighton. Was that number 10, Villanova? Villanova. Villanova took the game. But they suffer a bigger loss, though. The bigger loss was that they point guard Gillespie to his PCL. No, to his MCL, and he is done for the season. It's a shame that it has to end the way that it did. But, but I understand these things happen. So without their four general, how does Villanova, how does Jay Wright and the Wildcats respond without their four general? By the way, they won the top 15 Big East matchup, 72-60 over the 14th ranked Creighton Blue Jets. That was Wednesday's night's action. Let's get the last night's action. Last night, it was the battle for Michigan. The first of two as the Spartans were in and offered to take from second ring Michigan. No, third ring Michigan. Sorry. Third ring Michigan. 69 to 50. And I'm pretty sure you know who won. As Jawan Howard and the Michigan Rupert have clinched the regular season Big Ten title. Congratulations to Jerron Howard and the Michigan Wolverine. First season at the helm. Always his second season. Either way, Michigan has taken the crown for the Big Ten. And they'll go into the Big Ten tournament as the D number one seed. Big 12 action. 17th ranked Oklahoma State. Who's been red hot? Who's been doing their thing? Was in Baylor to take on the third ranked Baylor Bears. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a good game until K had cut him twisted his ankle. Nevertheless, the Baylor nevertheless Oklahoma State fought their butts off. But Baylor was too much. 81 to 70 win for the Baylor Bears. Gerard Butler, 22 points and five rebounds. TCU took the trip to six rank West Virginia. West Virginia did not fall for the trap. They handled their business 76 to 67. Jalen Bridge, Bridges, 22 points, 12 rebounds. Another, another news in action. Maryland took an L to Northwestern. That hurts their chances. That's a big loss for Maryland part to, to Northwestern. USC got got back into the win column with a beatdown over Stanford, seventy nine to forty two. Colorado won a good one, won a good game, seventy five to sixty one over Arizona State. The Buffaloes pulled away late, but it was a good game to be honest. I watched it, I enjoyed it. Buffaloes looked they good. Arizona State, they did not give up the fight, but it was the Buffaloes' night at home. And then the nightcap, the Red River Showdown. 15 ranked Texas. That was in Norman to take on the 16 ranked Sooners of Oklahoma. The road team took it as Texas took it 69 to 50 to 65. Good game in Norman. Another tough loss for the Sooners. And a good win for the Texas Longhorns. A win that they needed it. And they needed it good too. Then they got it. So that's the recap right now. And now, as I look at Joe Lenardi's updated bubble, the last four buys of the right now going to Louisville, Rutgers, Georgia Tech, and VCU. Rutgers slowly but surely making their way into the tournament. Mm. That was your last four. Your last four in. According to Jordan Nardis on ESPN. The last four teams to get into the tournament. The tournament was to start today. Will be Drake. 21 team. Can't argue with that. 
no matter what conference they're in, no matter what the competition is. You win 20 games, I can't you should be you should have an opportunity. You should have an opportunity. Not saying they, that you should get in. I'm saying you should be looked at as an opportunity to get in. You won 20 games. You can't argue with that. Michigan State. They got key top five victories. They got key top 25 victories. It's Tom Izzo. What you expect? Xavier, despite losing to Georgetown. Last four in. Boise State, despite losing to Fresno State. Last four in. Even with losses, they still just in as of right now. Just in as of right now. Fourth four out right now. Seton Hall. Seton Hall, you can't lose no more games. You are on the iceberg of going out for sure. Utah State. Utah State just can't catch a break. They be in games and they just can't pull it out. St. Louis, same as Utah State. Start off good. Now they can't catch breaks. And the uh, Duke Blue Devils. Duke is still alive. Meister says the team ain't dead. But man, they got to figure something out quick, fast, and in a hurry. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. They got to figure something out. They just got to figure something out. And then the next four out, the team that has the most to do. Syracuse. Good start with a win over Clemson. But you still got a lot of work to do, Jim Bay, huh? Still got a lot of work to do. I think they lost. You beat North Carolina, which is a good thing as well. But still got a lot of work to do. SMU. Not only y'all, but Memphis, who is also in y'all conference as well. Y'all damn in bad up. Better make it to the title game. And I don't see none one of y'all beating Houston, so. It's a tall task for the American Conference for SMU and Memphis right about now. It's a tall task right now. But we'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see. And last on the line of next four out is the old Miss Rebels. You kept yourself afloat by not losing to Kentucky. You kept yourself afloat by not losing to Kentucky. But, but, you have a lot of work to do, Old Miss. You have a lot of work to do. And you don't have many games left right now. You don't have many games left. So that's how it is on Dolan Audi's bracket. Seton Hall, Utah State, St. Louis, Duke, first four out. Next four out, Syracuse. SMU, Memphis, and Ole Miss. Your last four in right now is Drake, Michigan State, Xavier, and Boise State. And your last four buys, Louisville, Rutgers, Georgia Tech, VCU. Now, let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to the real good stuff here. Because this is the final weekend of the regular season, ladies and gentlemen. Because when next week is it, it's all about conference tournament. We already got some kind of tournaments on the way already. But let's, let's, let's look at this right now. As I'm looking in the schedule for today, I don't see anything good coming. It's mostly, mostly mid-major team. So right now, quarterfinals, 3.30 p.m. NBC Sports Network. 18 quarterfinals. Speaking of VCU, they are facing Dayton. VCU cannot lose this game to Dayton. VCU needs to make it to the A-10 championship game. Dayton needs to win the whole damn thing to make it. That is 3.30. Keep it moving with the A-10. George Mason, who's still trying to fight, to, who's still trying to fight to get their way in. They are taking on Davidson. Who's still trying to fight to get their way in? Both of them need to make a deep run. So they both need to make a deep run and just go on about their business. I 
And as I continue to look forward, pretty much that's, that's that's pretty much tonight is about your mid majors tonight. I'm just gonna put it like that. For all my mid majors tonight is about y'all because we got a lot. I'm seeing a lot of mid major teams going at it. So the old the Ohio Valley Conference. It's the semifinals. We have Moorhead State versus East Kentucky. Eastern Kentucky. That is 10.30 p.m. tonight on ESPNU. Moorhead State. The team, the last time I spoke to y'all, who beat Belmont. Taking on Eastern Kentucky. The team, matter of fact, who did Eastern Kentucky beat? Because I talked about them as well. What's that big team that they beat? Who did they beat? Uh, give me a minute to find it because I remember talking about Eastern Kentucky. They had made the podcast. They also beat Belmont. So two of the Belmont's four losses came to both of these teams that's facing each other in the semifinals right now. By the way, if that's at 1030, what what time is the other semifinal game? Is I Oh, eight o'clock. Jacksonville State and Belmont. So if Belmont continue to do what they do, we'll be seeing Belmont in the Ohio Valley Championship. Would it be East Tennessee, East Kentucky or Moorhead State? Two of their three losses came to both of these teams, so that'll be something to really look forward to. Like I said, tonight is all it's all about the mid the mid majors. Get all my mid major fans out there. Tune in if you got ESPN, if you got NBC Sports, if you got ESPN Plus, hell. Tune in. Today is mid major day. Catch you some mid major games. And have fun. Cause we know what Saturday is. We know what tomorrow is. Tomorrow the big boys are taking over. Because you are not. The big boys are taking over tomorrow. And when I say they are taking over tomorrow, I mean they are taking over tomorrow. So, as I'm looking at it right now, Rutgers, who has the last four by, they are on the road to take on Minnesota. Rutgers can't lose this game to Minnesota. They just can't. Clemson will try to bounce back and keep their hopes alive as they as Pittsburgh comes rolling into Clemson, South Carolina. That is 12 p.m. on the on the ACC network. The Rutgers Minnesota game is 12 p.m. on Fox. Michigan State and Auburn fighting for a better seed in the SEC tournament. 1 p.m. SEC network. Big Ten action. 2 p.m. ESPN 2. 17 ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys. They are in Morgantown, West Virginia to take on a 6th ranked Mountaineers. Ooh, what a game this is going to be. And my ACC people out there, 2 p.m. CBS. 8th ranked and the winners of the SEC regular season title of Alabama Crimson Tide. They are in Athens to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. A win for the Bulldogs will vote them into tournament play. I guarantee you that. Or at least a bigger chance at making it. Indiana will try to get a big win to keep their NCAA tournament hosts alive at 2 p.m. on ESPN as they are at 23rd ranked Purdue. Well, no, the first game without their star point guard will be at 2.30 on Fox as they are taking on the Providence Flyers. 3 p.m. is the battle is the battle of the Tigers. 3 p.m. SEC Network LSU are in Columbia to take on the Missouri Tigers. Both teams need victories here. Where's Tiger going? Where's Tiger wants it more? 4 p.m. ESPN Big Ten Country. Number four fighting Illinois is coming out that beat down of Michigan. They look to see if they can hand another beat down. Now, this time, the seven-ranked 
Ohio State and Columbus this time. Ohio State can use this win. They are two seed right now. There was a one seed, but now Illinois is a one seed. Michigan is a one seed. Baylor's a one seed, and Gonzaga's a one. We already know Gonzaga and Baylor are both one seeds. So right now it's, it's between Michigan and Illinois. If Ohio State wants to take one of them out, they need to win this game against Illinois. 4 p.m. ESPN2 ACC. ACC. The defending champs, 21st ranked Virginia Cavaliers. They are in Louisville, Kentucky to take on the Louisville Cardinals. Louisville has the last four buys right now. A win against the defending champs. Pierce you in as a lock. But let's see if they can do it. Pat 12 action, 4 p.m. CBS, USC, UCLA. That's all I got to say. USC, UCLA. 4 p.m. CBS. Six PM. Six PM. ESPN. Round two. Tobacco Road. Chapel Hill. Don't know where I'm going at. Duke Blue Devils. North Carolina Tar Heels. Woo! North Carolina won the first one in Cameron Indoors. Duke, you on the first full line out. Get paid back on the Tar Heels. We might have some talking to do. But if the North Carolina Tar Heels finish off Duke, just so you know, War Room is going to be a happy, and I mean a very happy man. I don't remember the last time they swept Duke in the season. I don't even remember the last time they swept Duke in the season. I, I don't. I really don't. I, I don't. But guess what? They have an opportunity at home. Chapel Hill. North Carolina. Duke. Round two. Seton Hall. Who, need, who needs every win they can get? They are on the road. 7 p.m. FS1 against the St. John Red Storm. St. John's rest on. Can they can they get another big win here? They can use one. Hey Xavier, who needs wins? 9 p.m. FS1. They are on the road to take on the Marquette Golden Eagles. Who played this out of the tournament. But they can play themselves back into the tournament if they get on the winning streak right now. Starting Saturday against them against the Xavier Musketeers. But the Xavier needs this win just as much because they they on the bubble right now. They in, but they can be pulled out. They in, but they can be pulled out. Speaking of a team who need a win, Utah State. They are at Fresno State. 11 p.m. FS1. They can really use that win. And that's that was, those are your games for Saturday. You had a lot of games on Saturday, and I mean a lot of games on Saturday. As so I look forward to Sunday, we said Memphis needed a win. We saw Wednesday as they trying to get in. Guess what? Sunday they are at home to take on ninth ring Houston Cougars, twelve p.m. CBS. Don't you touch that down. <laughs> if you're a Tigers fan, you better watch it. So if Memphis pull this out, they can find themselves in the tournament. Same time, ESPU, 12 p.m. My Florida Gators are in Knoxville to take on the Tennessee Volunteers. We need a bounce back win. So does Tennessee as well. But we need a bounce back. Florida, Coach White, we need this win. Do not mess around and lose this game. Do not mess around and lose this game. You beat, you, you, you sweet Tennessee. You sweet Tennessee. Thank you. 12-30, Fox. Top 25 matchup in the Big Ten. 23rd ranked West County, who is sliding, 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 sliding. All right, at 5th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. Iowa wants to keep on winning, but West Wisconsin, they need a win. Oh, my goodness, they need a win. They can't buy a win right now. 
Iowa. So they need they need to find whatever way they do to be Iowa. Because they need it. They need it. 4 p.m. ESPN. The Big 12 takes over. 18 ranked Texas Tech Ra- Raiders versus third ranked Baylor down in Texas. Baylor, Texas, that is. Waco, should I say. 4 p.m. ESPN. It's a good, juicy one to watch. Both teams will be in the tournament. But it's a good, juicy one to watch at 4 p.m. ESPN. 4.30 CBS is round two of the Battle of Michigan. Second ring, Michigan Wolverines. They are now, they take they trip to East Lansing to take on the Michigan State Spartans. Let's see, can Michigan State make it a better game than the first one? And possibly pull out a win. Let's see if they can do that. 7 p.m., Big 12 Network, ESPN Plus, 15 ring, Longhorn take on TCU. 7 p.m., down in Carter Park, Maryland. Maryland is hosting Penn State. 8 p.m. FS1. It, it is the it is the battle, the war, whatever you want to call it now, since they changed it from the Civil War now. I don't know what they're gonna call the going for, but it's Oregon and Oregon State. And Corvallis, Oregon. And that's your Sunday. That's your weekend right there. The six and the seven. That's your weekend right there. And then from that point forward. It's conference tournament time. And speaking of which, even though we have some conference tournaments already starting, let's see when the big boys get, get up and running before, before we get out of here. If only there was a place nearby you could get. See, we didn't want to do that. The 18 has already started, as I said. March 9th, the ACC gets gets it tipped off. The Big 12 gets tipped off at March 10th. The Big Keys all along with the Big 12 on March 10th. The Big 10, March 10th. Keep it scrolling down. The, Mosaic, the Mountain West, March 10th. Pac-12 will take on March 10th. SEC, March 10th. So there you go. March 10th is your date. That means next Wednesday. Next Wednesday we're gonna be previewing. So on the Tuesday's episode, we're gonna preview on the big the big boys conference as they tip off their conference tournament. So you got your game for this weekend. You know what you need to watch. And now you know what you need to do. Cause when March 10th get here. Wednesday, the Big Boys Conference Tournament takes off. And then we'll get to March 14th for Selection Sunday to find out who's in the tournament. With that being said, down to the Playmaker Silence. I hear from Justin from Florida. On your Friday's edition of Hoops Talk. Enjoy your weekend. I'll holler at y'all Tuesday. Thank you guys very much for listening to another week of Who's Talk. Now, if you want to stay updated on new episodes that's coming up for Who's Talk, please subscribe to the podcast. And those of you who are listening on iTunes or Apple Podcast, please leave a rate and review of the podcast. Let us know how we are doing. And for those of you who want to be updated on everything that goes on on the Playmakers Blog brand, subscribe to the website, theplaymakersblog.com. That way you can see every podcast that's under the brand. And you can even get your own Playmakers Bar merch by hitting our shop title on the website. You'll see our thread list store and our spread shop store. So get you some Playmakers Bar merch. And don't forget to subscribe to the website to stay updated on everything that goes on on the Playmakers Bar brand. As for me, the Playmaker down there, Silence, I'm signing off until next week for Mohu's Talk. <laughs>